continue on with, so what I was kind of sharing with you is like just best practices in terms of reading foundations. And, and that was a really fast overview, right? You know, but these are the key things that we want to think about when teaching our, our, our children, our students to read. But what if that's not working? And I know in our current, we always have this issue, but also in our current context, we have a number of students that need additional support and uh, additional um, reinforcement with this. So I know you're all familiar with MTSS and tiers of support and all that stuff. So I just kind of want to lens that. So what I've been sharing with you previously is really best practices for everybody, right? Um, and that's kind of our tier one. But what about those, the additional time? And um, I want to give you a resource um, that I think you will find very helpful. There is a Padlet, a link to a Padlet that looks like this. And I'm going to walk you through this Padlet, but it is an amazing resource um, that you can use with your staff, share with your staff that they can actually use. So I will go into all the pieces in a moment, but there's actually an assessment if you don't have one um, for decoding and encoding. There's some professional learning videos on how to do different routines and about reading, re um, reading foundations. And then there is a slide deck for each of the groups of vowels. And so we affectionately call this the vowel project. Um, students, when we are getting past kindergarten, the area where they struggle the most is with the vowels and the, all the different complicated vowel patterns. So we chose to zoom in specifically on the various vowels and the various vowel patterns and all the vowel graphemes. Um, and so, um, and eventually I will get to the multisyllabic stuff. I haven't gotten there yet, but we are done up through short vowels up to our control vowels, okay? So in addition, if you look on the Padlet right here, there's a hyperdoc, and it is the same exact content if you prefer this visual, okay? So you just have two options. I'm a universal design person. We give you different representations, right? So you can have it as a Padlet or as a hyperdoc. But I wanted to walk you through it, and then you guys will have time to kind of dig into it, all right? So these resources are designed to supplement what you're already doing. So that best first instruction, what you're already doing in your current instructional resources, um, but these resources can be used for additional review. It can be zoomed in, like I have these four kids that do not get short E. <laughs> I'm gonna pull them in a small group and work with them, okay? Um, it can be done with additional adults, adults that are working with kids for additional practice and review. It could be a station or asynchronous. You can put it in Seesaw, Google Classroom, whatever. It could be practice. Um, parents, if you train them how to do it, could use it as well, right? So it's a really flexible resource that can be used in any way that you feel is helpful. Um, I want to say thank you to the group of people that contributed to this. Um, I pulled some of my amazing Reading Foundations friends across the state in, and they helped uh, make these resources. So basically, there's a slide deck. So the short vowels are all red colored, okay? And the long vowels are teal colored, and the um, digraphs um, are purple colored, and the R controlled are gray colored, just so you know the colors do mean something. And they are driven by assessment data. So they are not just to be used randomly. It should be used to be very specific and it's tar targeting what kids need. So for those of you that already have an assessment tool that tells you specifically what um, patterns students have not mastered, just use that, okay? That's totally fine, but not everybody has that. So we have created, Lisa Rivera created this for us actually. Um, and uh, it is our own version of the, what used to be called the BPST, we call this the BPS. And basically you have kids read words, you can give it three times a year as a monitoring tool if you need this. But if you, if you see you have a child that can't read um, a long A, they're struggling with that, if you click on this, it takes you right to the slide deck with all the resources. So I just wanted to know that you know that that was available to you and all the directions are on the Padlet on how to give it in this phonics screener right here under assessment, okay? Um, then 
The Padlet obviously is designed to you are here, see, say, right, that I shared with you a little bit earlier, and that was why I provided that context. And so I'm going to walk you through a collection of the slides. It's not all of them in a slide deck, and then you'll have time to dig in. So we're going to look at the long A slide. So it starts with this. There's a pronunciation option for those that need it. And then there's phonemic awareness um, pictures for the kids. And then if you click on this slide right here, this image, it actually takes you to a video. Some of you were watching those videos in our exploration. And that is a lesson of me um, doing a phonemic awareness lesson on Jamboard. So there's a lesson for them to watch. And then down here in the corner, there's a link to my Jamboard template. So if teachers wanna take that and modify it with their own pictures and use that resource as well. Then we have found some good um, YouTube videos that can be given to kids to interact with it and make it fun and it really fun for kids. Then we give, um, then we move to the blending practice, right? So again, anytime you click on this, this will take you to a video of me doing blending um, with, with letters this time. And my slide deck is down here as well, okay? And then we've given you a set of animated slides for sound by sound blending. So when we do long vowel blending, we put the whole grapheme up together. So a p, ape, what's the word? Ape, b, a, ba, k, bake. What's the word? Bake, that's the routine, right? Um, t, a, ta, k, take. What's the word? Take. So again, the slides are already been done. They're pre-animated with that particular pattern for students to have a lot of practice with, right? And again, I would probably do this in small group with kids that need long A, but I could do this in my whole group instruction as well if I'm focusing on this particular graphy. We've also given them whole word blending boards that they can practice with where we're not doing the sound by sound, but we're looking at the whole word and working on blending with the whole word. And then we have given them a fun game, a wheel of practice. So I'll, I'll show you this one. You click on it and it gives them a word and then they have to read the word. We have a winner and what's the word? And then they can read. So it's just a fun way to you know that kids have a game with it, just kind of make it more interactive, right? Um, and then we have blending sentences. So once they've mastered that particular grapheme, then we can take them to sentences where they can practice that in a complete sentence. We have sorts. Um, if it's not in present mood, mode, there's words on the side and they can drag and drop. Um, so they can interact with doing short A, long A words. And then there's dictation or spelling or writing with that pattern. Again, there's a video with a slide deck. Um, and then we have word building um, slides where they can drag the letters up and we actually have to build what that word is um, that are long A words. And then some of you found this in the exploration. We always link to this website, which is another digital way that kids can interact with that. So that was A with a consonant silent E, and then it repeats for every grapheme on the sound spelling card. So here's a couple sites for AY. There's a AY card lessons, which I'm not gonna show you. And then there's a whole set for AI. So it breaks it down so I can get really specific in terms of the specific patterns that a child or group of children are struggling with. And they repeat. And then at the end of the slide deck, there is a long A choice board that again can be assigned in lots of different ways. There's starfall games, there's um, decodable text that they can practice. Um, oh no, this is practice reading words, this is a blending practice a word sort, the videos, a decodable book, and then there's actually a little quiz that kids can take to see how they're doing. Um, and then there's a non-digital choice board if we want some non-screen time for kids to interact with the word. And then it ends with a set of boggle games where kids can actually uh, make words with that particular sound or graphene, I'm sorry. So every slide deck has all of these resources.